Hallelujah. All right, Israel. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Blessed day he has granted unto us as we began this Akharuth, or this renewing, restoring of Kitzvi Imads, teaching that will strengthen, revive us, and above all to make us strong. That is most important in this hour. The process that Yah has always used was by hearing. We as a nation of people, we have not developed our hearing well. That is quite important that we understand how to jemak, to hear with the acuteness of faithfulness to obey that instructions when we can comprehend what Yah is trying to convey unto us. So it has been some time since we have had our Khitve Imat, Scripture Truth. It is a restoring. And so we are going to teach on tonight the restoration, the restoring, the Akharut, uh, the Mape, the Kara, the restoring of the health to his nation. And that is vitally important for us, Yisraya, that our health, Restore it. And any time you restore anything or the Akharuth, it is to bring it back to the originality of what it was and to make sure that all of the details and the finiteness of that, it is visible to the eyes. And so when Yah made man, when he created him, he created he in the image of himself. And that is to walk in the fullness of his health. And that there is a light of that health that shines from the bosom of Yisrael. And there is a process of acquiring that. It doesn't come by certain dietary laws, although that Yah has given us a Pacific. Let no one tell you that Yah doesn't intend for man to eat meat. Because he does. It is just how we process things and how we divulge things that has and have caused the condition of his nation, his people, our physicality, our mentality. And then we are people that's very sick. And it begins here in the Laban, begins in the mind, begins in the bosom of Yisraya. And we cannot continue to defer these matters. We must deal with them among his people. The longer we defer it, we will not deal with the actuality of those things that consistently remove us from the command of Torah. Yah has given us an insurance policy in Torah. He has given us instruction for the perfect bill of health. That our health will be sound, that we will have the soundness of the tranquility of mind, because we know that we have the acharuth, or the health, the restoration, the restoring of the soundness of mind, our physical being, and that it presents the beauty of the physicality of the achim and the achodim. And there are things that we must begin to deal with. It is going to have to begin here. We're going to have to assess ourselves as we assess others. We must be as critical in our critiquing of ourselves as we critique others. As we emphasize the minute things of others whereby they are not fulfilling their responsibility, we must fulfill ours with an absolute dedication. And that's why we tend to fail in those aspects because we don't pay the attention to ourselves that it is needed. And we must begin that. We as a nation of people, we must begin that. And so I want to teach from that platform tonight the healing, the restoration of his people. And I'm going to continue on this as long as Yah grants me on Khitve Imats, I don't know what Zachin Ramaya will teach, but this shall be what I will teach for some time to come. 
It must become rooted in our minds. It must be. And our physicality is a presentation of actually what's in our laba, in our minds, in our hearts. And we must deal with that, Yisra'ya. It is one thing about the nation many times. Uh, we have too much time on our hands that our minds become so idle uh, that the only thing we know to soothe our mind is to consume uh, a certain volume of food. And that's just the way we do it. We can say that's not so, but it is. We just have too much time on our hand. And the more free time we have, then the more we think about food. I know that one. Because I can consume as much as any man or any person. I love fried chicken and I love fried, yes, fried. I don't want it baked. I want fried chicken. I want fried fish. But I know that there's a certain limitation as I began to progress in age that I must limit myself to a certain amount of those things that are excellent and they are tough. And it's difficult to uh, stop engaging in that area, but we must consider ourselves and think of the value and the importance of health. And then once we began to do that, then we began to balance ourselves in our diet. We must address this head on. Especially among the nation of his people. We must address it. We must attack it. And we must come to resolution as to what Torah says. We must take the process of the Torah we must go in the way that they are, the command that Torah commands us. And if we don't, Yisra'ya, then we're going to find ourselves in situation and in, in physical illness that's going to be very detrimental to us. It is. And the older we get, the more apprehensive we must be concerning our physicality and our health. They don't think because one doesn't eat meat that they are more healthy than one that does. Don't think because you think you have a knowledge of herbs that you have a physical health that is superior to others. That's not so. I, I'm going to show us one of the most profound identities of what a healthy man and a healthy woman looks like. And how you will know that they are healthy. Can we answer all things from Torah? Yeah. All right. I want to begin here. Yeah. Yeah. Now we get offended. Let's get offended at ourselves. Yeah. All right. There's no one we must be upset with. But ourselves. We cannot be offended by anything but what we have done. And it belongs to us, Yisra'ya. Yeah. And that's just the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I want to begin here in Torah. I may tell you where I will teach from tonight. But it's vitally important for us to understand Torah, what truth is, and what Yah commands us, us. I want to begin here, first of all, I want you to listen to this. Because it tells us what the yare of the fear of Yah does in our lives. And the fear of Yah calls us to govern ourselves according to the instructions of Torah. Now, if there is no yare, a yara, no fear, no reverence of Yah, then we will disregard what Torah teach as to any aspect of our lives that it deals with us. So the wisdom of Shirak, he speaks to us profoundly. I want you to hear this. And he says uh, here in the writing unto Yisra'ya, he tells us what the fear of Yah will produce. He says that the fear of Yah, when a man, when a woman fears Yah, when they understand the value and the importance of Torah, his promises, his word. It calls one as a son with fear. The great instructions of his avatar. 
that it caused him not to go beyond the boundaries, the statutes uh, that the father had implemented to make sure that he would stay grounded. And that is what Torah is, to make sure we stay grounded, that our lives are complete. We have sound lives. There is tranquility, there is calm, there is shalom. There is always a restoring or a restoration process daily in our lives. It is one thing that if you get out of balance or out of step, you go back to the place where you know you stepped out of bounds. And you proceed from there. You can always go back to the starting point. I don't care how many times it takes you. uh, You can always go back there. I don't care how many times you fail. uh, How many times you're not able to be persistent. uh, You always go back to the starting point. That compassion, that will, that desire, that force that causes you to see something beyond the scope whereby you think is valuable and important. So the things that we believe that are valuable and important, if they are not producing light, then they are not valuable, neither are they important. So the messenger with the soundness of his wisdom, he tells us that the fear of Yah is a crown. Uh, It is a crown of uh, wisdom. It is the crown of the hukmah. When a man has that fear, you will see the wisdom rise from his rush. This is where you wear a crown on one's head. So when a man has that reverence and the great fear of Yah, you will see how this man expounds upon wisdom in every regard that pertains unto Torah. It makes no difference what he addresses There is a perfect law of wisdom uh, that flows from that man. It says it maketh or it calls shalom uh, and it causes the perfect health of Yah to flourish. It calls our health to flourish, to be sound, that we have life in us, that there is a soundness to us. And he says, both which are the soundness of health and the abundance of the wisdom that is generated by the fear of Yah, they are both. They are gifts of Almighty Yahweh. And when one has that fear, when one has that wisdom, Shirak says, and it enlarges their rejoicing that loves Yah. When a man has that wisdom, it has been generated by the great fear of Yah, you will see the largeness of that man and the largeness of his soundness and the largeness of his wisdom, which is of great volume, of great essence. There's a great sum by the rejoicing, by the rejoicing. For that man rejoices in the abundance. He knows that great health is a gift from Yah. It's almost like the parent saying to the child, you obey me, you do what I tell you, you don't do anything bad, then I will get you that bicycle or I will get you that toy. There is a responsibility in requiring or acquiring the fear of Yah and the knowledge of Yah which is a kita, it is a crown uh, upon one's head. Uh, It makes no difference how he eats or she eats. They can eat all the herbs they want, uh, drink nothing but the most pristings of waters. uh, But if one does not have that kita or the crown of wisdom upon their head, uh, then their health or the physicality of their being, uh, it means nothing at all. uh. That those that smoke cigarettes for 50 years and live to be 100, it makes no difference. That's not the health of Almighty Yah. That's not the soundness of Yah's health. And when a man has that great beauty of the wisdom, he has a chitza, he has a crown. He has a beautiful crown. He is a man of authority, he is in the kingdom realm. 
Because he understands the soundness of the wisdom of Yah. It enlarges one's heart. Because one knows that all of these great measures have come from Yah. And when one's heart is enlarged, you will see the product of that by the rejoicing. And so when we're not a people of rejoicing, we can't say what we want to because uh, we're not sound and we're not healthy. Our minds are not being fed the proper dietary law of the Torah. And so there is no soundness, there is no rejoicing uh, in the bosom of a nation uh, who doesn't love Yah. None whatsoever. So we must get back to that what Yah commands us, uh, what he tells us, and it begins there with the reading out of Shirak. Now, David instructs us in Tehillim, understanding the process of the great uh, exodus out of the bondage of Misraim, whereby they loved the flesh pots, they loved the garlic, and they ate and they were consumed by the drinking and the eating. Now, we are all consumed by that. We love to drink, we love to eat, we relish in that. Um, we go beyond the limitation of the law of Yah. And because we have gone beyond the limitations, we are disfigured. Not only are we disfigured outwardly, but in our minds we're disfigured. Because a healthy mind will produce uh, the healthy results. Fact of the matter. We look at the elderly ones here, how that they have grown, the old, and there are those that are younger than them that do not have the energy or the resolve that they have, Yisrael. Let's get real. Let's get honest. Let us examine ourselves, our minds and our hearts, and be genuine with ourselves. We must begin that. So what Yah does, as I'm talking tonight, he sins, as Davi says, uh, that Yah, he begins to shalak. He sent. He calls it to be sown. He calls his word to go out. He sent forth. He calls the power of his word to be stretched out unto a nation. He sent forth his dabarim, his promises, his Torah, and it says, and it healed. And that's what brings about the rafa of Yah. That's what brings about the repairing of our minds. This is what makes us healthy, Yisrael. This is what restores us. And Yah sent forth Shalach. He caused his word to go forth, to spread. His love spread abroad in our hearts. He spread forth his words. And Daiweed said, and he healed he rafa, he restored, he restored health, he restored even the mentality of the mind of his nation to seek him and to follow him. And he healed his people. And then it says, Yahi Malats, he delivered. He delivered them. He released us from those things that bring us into captivity and bondage which there is almost a, a sensation and a gravitation and a lust that is so profound, uh, we cannot break the sadistic habit of it. Yeah. And he molats, and he delivered them from their own, uh, from their destruction. Now, what is the thing that is destroying us? It is not some external forces that are destroying us. It is what proceeds out of our own hearts, out of our own bellies. And when Yah sends forth his words, uh, although we may think it is appalling, we reject it. When he corrects us, judges us, and instructs us to reveal unto us uh, those things whereby will impede the power of his restoration to us. Uh, we must be restored back like to the first man, Adam. We must be restored back to the perfect health, Yisrael. And the way we receive that or the beginning of that process, we must hear the Torah. He sent forth. He sent forth his Torah and he rafa. He healed them. He restored them. He reclaimed them. 
And we must allow the Torah of Yah to penetrate to the depths of our hearts that it began to create the wisdom, the chuchma of Yah, and that the kita of that great fear of Yah, which is wisdom, that it brings about this great rejoicing because we know that those both are gifts of Almighty Yah. That is perfect health, perfect physicality, and also the fear of Almighty Yahweh. We must understand that. We cannot be, as a nation of people, the people that are the most unhealthy people. We don't look healthy. We don't act healthy. Our appetites are uncontrollable. I can speak that way. You don't have to discipline uh, a judge yourself in that matter. I can speak to me this way because uh, I'm honest with me. We have no sense of control. Uh, it is not the most beautiful uh, uh, examples that we as a nation uh, shine forth as though that we are the zira of Yisraya, the seed of Yah. That we should be a people that's tiferah, beautiful in every aspect. From the mind to our hearts to our physical being. We should be a beautiful people. Yeah, we are a sugula. We are a special people. We are peculiar people. And when someone is peculiar, it represents not only the mentality and the spirituality, but also the physicality as well. When you see a man that is physically strong, you look at that man. A woman that is very attractive and beautiful in the sense of the physicality, you look at her. And you don't have to be a size one or skins and bones. That's not the matter. You don't have to stop eating fish and, and chicken and steak. You don't because uh, this is a law that Yah gave us, but we must have wisdom uh, and the comprehension of that law and what we must do to provide the necessities for our physical, physical being uh, that we will represent a kingdom. And there's nothing more splendid when you go to a kingdom. It is beautiful. The buildings are beautiful and everything is in place. That's what makes the kingdom beautiful. You be it all. You Oh, wow, look at the building. We are the kingdom of Yah. Hallelujah. We're the jewels of his kingdom, Yisrael. Yah. We are a nation that I can criticize you. And I'm not careful how I criticize you. And I don't understand what that does to me. Can I read something for us? I want to read again from the wisdom of Shirach. Hear this. He says, before you speak, before you even utter, he said you need to learn the maths, to be taught, disciplined, to become a disciple, to have the fruits of that wisdom. But before you speak, learn. It's almost like one that has lost a few pounds and they become the expert in weight loss. And they want to tell everyone. He says, before you speak, learn. And then he tells us this. He says, before you fall, Khali, before you fall ill, before our bodies begin to fade, we have not learned how to take care of ourselves. We've eaten everything that the world offered us. And we get upset when there are things uh, that are vital to our strength and our growth. Uh, and before you become ill, uh, he commands us to take care of your health. Well, how do we take care of our health? Where do we begin? How is it? There's a process in Torah that teaches us how we take care of our health. And we must take care of our health, Israel. We must learn to understand. As one would say, you got to hear your, your body talking to you. So that, my friend, you must hear what your body is saying. You, you know you can't do that because uh, the physicality or either the, the tremendous pressure that, uh, that's bearing on you, you can't do it. So you have to hear your body. So you have to hear the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. It's a tremendous balance and we must find that balance, Yisraya. 
I say to us all, and many times in our homes, we just have too much time to think about things, uh, especially eating. And don't tell me we don't think about eating. Sit for three or four hours uh, and see how many times uh, and see where your mind goes. It doesn't go to Torah. You're thinking about eating. And so because we have such time, we don't keep our time. That's why the Torah commands you daughters to make sure you're busy with your hands. Yeah. You do that, you, you, you don't think about those kinds of things. But when you're not busy, you're sitting, you're doing nothing. You're going to think about eating and eating becomes the most important thing to you. And you will be surprised how much we eat without even cognitive or conscious of that, thinking that it will have no effect on us, but we're wrong. We see it in our illness and our health, our bodies betraying us, our bones are not strong, our physicality, you know something is wrong, but the thing of it is, the restoration begins, we began to hear the Torah, we can get back there. We can, Yisra, yeah, we go back. I don't care if you fall, fail every day, go back. You, you, you'll take a step one day, go back. Examine yourself, learn how you fail. Examine your heart, your mind, and see where your missteps were. And examine yourself with great critiquing. You began to see the results. But as long as we got excuses, then you're not going to see any results. And as long as you put it off to the next day, now is the acceptable time. You must do it today. You must do it now. You can't wait until tomorrow. And I don't care if you fail tomorrow, regroup and go back to the hearing of those things that will supply the necessity of strength and health to your mind. You must build your mind up. We as this nation, we cannot... We need the ancient, we need the older ones, we need that. We cannot despise the herbs of Yah because Yah made them. I don't care if you live in a poverty where you can put some little pots out and grow herbs, you can grow things even in your apartment complex. So we don't have the mindset today whereby the bath or even the sons of Yisraya are concerned with those things, understanding the value, the medicinal, and the importance of them for the house of Yisraya. Why? We have time, but it's not, it is not time that we spend in valuable pursuits. They're pursuits that are empty. I'm going to proceed here, Yisraya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Torah tells us, here in Kohetzi, hear this word Shilomo, a man that was wealthy, man that had great wisdom. He speaks in a way that is so profound concerning the wisdom. Wisdom is the experience of knowledge that one has acquired through the process of learning, whether it's through battles, uh, trials, uh, through great success, all of that what we call success, uh, that it creates an experience uh, that is not based upon hearsay, uh, but it's based upon the actual. Uh, so Shalom speaks here. He speaks of the great, wonderful blessing of wisdom. He tells us that wisdom is a defense. The wisdom of Yah will defend truth. Even when you fail, it will defend truth in you. Wisdom is a defense and also money is a defense. But he talks about that which is yitron. Yitron. That which is of great value. That which is much better. You can profit from it. And he says, uh, but the excellence, the excellence, the yitron, the great profiting or the profit of knowledge, da'at. The ability to exercise in the wisdom. There are men that have the ability as an engineer to construct things uh, but have no practical skills uh, how to do that. They cannot do it. They cannot it was an old saying in the days I can't, how did it go, that one uh, had the ability, an educated fool. They would say that, quote, you're nothing but an educated fool. 
unquote. Because you did not have the yitron of the excellence of all of that teaching, it did not produce anything. It did not make you shy. It did not make you enlightened that you could enlighten others. He said, but of all of that, but the excellence of knowledge, of da'at, the ability to exercise within the content of that wisdom is, he says, that wisdom gives chaya, life, to them that have it. That's what wisdom does. Now, I want to define that word chaya as I did on the Shabbat. That this is what chaya is. It is to have life. It causes us to remain alive. It sustains life. It causes our lives to be prosperous. It causes us to live forever. And then above all that, it restores us to life and health. That is what Chaya is. That is the Acharuth. That is the Mape. That is the Rafa. It restores us to health. It restores us to the soundness of mind, to the discipline of Torah, to the statutes, uh, to the Huchim. The laws are those things that cause us to, to shine in the excellence of Yathri Joseph because we have wisdom. And the keats of the crown of our head, he says, the Yitron. But the excellence of knowledge, he says, is that wisdom, when a man has wisdom, it gives life to them that have it. When one is wise about one's own physicality, their bodies, their health, then one has high life as a living veget vegetation. There's breath and life in them. It begins with wisdom. And how do we cure wisdom? It is by the ability to hear and to learn and to listen and to be quiet. We don't do that. And so there is no great light of shining to our countenance. I'm going to show us something tonight. There's no great light of wisdom that shines in our countenance. And so we're not a strong people, not only were we spiritually, but physically and mentally. You must begin with our hands, daughters, sons. You must begin there. And if you don't, woe unto us. We cannot sit idle and allow our time to be consumed with massaging our own lust. I love fried chicken. But I don't want to eat it every day, or I'd rather be very uh, judicial when I eat it. I love fried fish. I love lamb's meat. I love all of that. But I know that what is best and what is to my advantage for my health-wise, we must be able to listen to our bodies. We must be able to listen to others. We must be able to hear others. We must be able to receive from others. Because of who we're listening to, if it's me, and there is no progression or progressing in me, then I need to stop listening to me. You go to the doctor, you listen to him. And you do what the doctor says. And you see results because you say what you want to. You see results because, first of all, he sent forth uh, his knowledge of the medical field. He imparts that into you. You hear that. You respond to that by taking the action that he commands, and then you see results. So Yah gives us commands here. Shurak says, you don't despise the physician. And we're not talking about what we perceive to be physicians today. I understand, but even to that degree, you don't despise what the physician says because Yah created him and his gift is from Yah. And so the power of Torah, your sure is the living word. Uh, if his word is sent into your heart, it will heal us. Hallelujah. 
It will make us stable and strong. It will balance our lives. We, but we must allow it to be shalak. It must be shalak. We must hear what he says, Yisraya. Why should we hear that? Because it began to create the fear of Yah in us. It makes us examine me and see where I fell and see why my condition is like it is. And then it began to create the fear of Yah, which uh, the result of that, as even Shalomo says, the, the wisdom of that knowledge and the experience, uh, it began to create a beautiful kita. And when you see the great crowd, is because uh, you rejoice that you know that Yah speaks unto you. And He speaks of your health. He doesn't intend for us to be that way. He really doesn't, Yisrael Yah. He doesn't intend for our young ones to be unhealthy and unenergetic. Not to find young men to be that, young women. Not to find all the ones to be that way. He really doesn't. And that's just the truth. See, these elderly men, they don't walk like they are old men. There's some that walk a little more halty, but some that don't. I said, I want to walk like him when I get that age. If I get that age, I don't even know if I get that age. But either way, it's fine with me. I just want, I want my life to be robust and healthy. And there are things we can do to make our lives robust and healthy. Can I proceed? Well, I will, my friends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will. I want to show you there's something that Shalomo says. He uses the word mape that calls us to be healthy and sound, robust, energized, that's why I, I, I'm a student of examining words in Torah. I'm always examine, examining uh, the origin, the etymology, whether it's Ethiopic, Achadian, whether it's Hebraic. Regardless to from that old language, I like to delve into the depths of its meaning and search out different variants of, this wor of words. So he speaks from the plethora of this wisdom. He shows us that the mape is the remedy. He shows us the remedy of health. That's why I always say sometimes we think that I'm being harsh. But there is, you will never produce anything but one pacifying you. It is almost like someone tell you your ears. Um, someone comes along and pacify you. Uh, they pacify you because they don't want you to progress uh, uh, because they're not willing to exert of themselves that kind of energy, so they will progress. It's almost like you're working on a job, the foreman or the manager like you give you responsibility, and the other one say, well, uh, I, I wouldn't, you know, he brown knows it, uh, uh, you, you shouldn't do that. Uh, that's the way it is. So you don't want pacifying. You want that which is hard and tough. It does go to cause you to exert a certain amount of, uh, of energy and integrity. But this is what Shalomo says. Uh, he says, uh, he talks about the wisdom of the, uh, uh, the status and the commands uh, of Torah. He says, for they are life. That's where life is. Life is in the Torah. Life, Torah is life. He says, for they are life. Initially, they are life uh, to those that find. Those that uh, massa. Those that find. The riches of wisdom. The profoundness of the knowledge of Yah. It is life. Uh, it is health. Uh, it is mape. It is soundness of mind. It caused them to be healthy. It caused them to be restored, Yisraya. It is mape. It is the remedy. It is the power of deliverance. Uh, for they are life to those that uh, masab that obtain it. Though that encounter the wisdom of Torah and that ascertain it, uh, that there is the light of that wisdom that shines from them. Uh, he said, those that find it, and it is health to all. He did not say the ruach of the nefesh, uh, but Shalomo says it is health to all of their flesh. That's what Torah is, health to our flesh. It brings about the correct discipline. It brings about the wisdom of all things. Uh, it causes us to understand the value of this body, which is the bed of Yah. It is what the light, the power, and the witness of Yahshua shine forth. So when men see us, they will see the excellence of his Yitron, the excellence of his beauty upon us. 
That's what they will see. And it has to be that way. And we must begin to hear and allow this word to, to be sent unto us. You know, we are people that say, well, he's talking about him. He's saying that for her. May I please, my friend, to die. That's common among his nation. We will look and see who it's for. It's for you. We're always looking to see who it's for. It's for you. He sent forth his Torah. And he healed them. Who is he talking to? He's talking to his house. That's who he's talking to, Yisrael. Yeah. The wisdom, the Torah, the statutes, the mitzvah of Yah, it is help to our flesh. Yeah. It brings help to us. It shows us Yah's policies. It shows us how to eat. It teaches us what things are not important for us. Yeah. That's why times is wonderful for us just to fast a day or two and not try to take advantage of the food the next day. We need to learn how to go without a few meals and discipline yourself not to cook to eat as much. I love fried fish. I love fried. No, I don't want my dear baked. I want fried dear steaks. I love all of that. I love it all. I like to eat like I love uh, uh, pecan pie and coconut pie and cake. Well, I, although I love it, I know there must be a certain amount of discipline that I must exude. It may not love me as much as I love it, so I have to be cautious. Life is more than eating and drinking, Yisra'ya. It is just more than that, whether we buy it or not. We, you, we lose the lust of our beauty, our physicality, and all of that. Our skin complexion, the beauty of our skin, the, the glossiness and the, and the very luster of it, we lose that. Of what we put in our bodies. We from a system whereby they take the blood, the fat and everything. They use that and, and Yah gives us an insurance policy. That there is one thing we should not eat, he tells us. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful how we consume things. Can I proceed? I want to. Hallelujah. <clears throat> David says here, I, that's why I said, when one has the health of the Ruach, it is expressed in their countenance. And a healthy face, it is an expression of the blessings of Yah. How can you say that with well, David tells me here to Helium. He says, why are you cast down, O oh, my nephesh? The substance of my being, my life, it's almost like a child. They hunch their shoulders, they cast their heads down. You can tell that they're, they're upset. You know, in the days, Mama, my Ima, you know, Granny and those that were old would say, boy, you better stand up right. Get that thing off your face. They knew it, didn't they not know it? Sure they did. Although they may not have known the exact of scripture, it was in their bosom because they had passed down the generation were that not that far off from the great captivity of the Shabi, a slavery. And so they knew the, how their disposition had to be in order to represent a nation and a people that were, were, were regarded as a retarded, a rejected, to, as chattel, not even as human. Let's get real. So David said, why are you cast out all my nephesh, nephesh, the substance of my being? He says, and why are you disquieted within me? He said, first of all, you must take that. You must have a drive for the beauty of the wisdom of Yah and the essence of what Torah says. Not hope, but take that. That you know that there's a resolution. You can expect the resolution to come. That is what tikva is. Uh, hope doesn't give you that. But we must tikva. 
We must have that tikva. He said, tikva in Yah. For I shall yet, listen now, praise him. I shall praise Yah. I shall lift him up. I shall sing. I shall shamak. I shall praise Yah. This is what he says. Who is the health of my face, my pony. I'll tell you where that one is. Just listen to Helium 4211. Yah. He said, is the health. And when you don't find a healthy ponim, he is the health of my countenance. He makes our countenance healthy. There are those that I will say, your facial expression is wrong. That lets me know that there is not a soundness of the wisdom of Yah's Torah. And then there are those that are superficial with their false grinning and skinny. It doesn't mean a thing, Yisrael. But when a man has tikva in Yah, when he has that great desire and passion in Yah, he will praise him. And when he prays him, why? Because he knows that Yah is the health, he is the Yahshua, he is the beauty, he is the, he is the great strength of his countenance. He says, and you are my sovereign master. The wisdom caused the kitzah, the crown, to be upon our heads. And because we have great tigva in the Torah of Yah, it brings health. It brings a beauty to our countenance. It brings life. It brings essence to us. It brings a beauty. When, I'm, when we are cast down and our countenance look horrible and there is no life or beauty there, there's something sick. We don't have the health for Yah. For Yah is the health of our countenance. He is what make our countenance healthy. So while we constantly cast down, what causes us to be cast down? It is the heaviness of our own corruption. It's not what I've done to you. It's not what the devil is doing. It's what we are doing in this devilish mind of ours. You can't blame no one you're going to blame when you stand before the great throne of judgment. You can say it was my wife and my children. You're not going to blame nobody. You can say how they did me wrong. It means nothing to you. And our countenance shall never be cast down. Never, my friend. Why? Because we have the Rafa, the health. Yah is the health of my countenance, sir. Because my mind rejoices in him. When our minds uh, do not rejoice in the abundance of his riches, when we don't love him, uh, our countenance always cast down. Yeah. He is our health. And so when you don't see a man or a woman when their countenance, countenance is not healthy, you know that there is no rejoicing in them. That's why I would tell men, check your countenance out. Look at your poor name, man. It doesn't represent the, the, the health or the beauty of Yah. And we as elderly men, we should be able to apprehend, appertain, pertain the wisdom of one's speech. We should not have to be told things over and over and over and over again. We should not have to be told things over and over and over again. You go out here driving, the first time you stop, they give you a ticket, you will watch how you drive. When they drop that fine on you and you got to pay three, four, five hundred dollars, uh, you will watch it. That, that, that sign out there telling you, looking to see what the speed limit is in that particular area. And that's just the truth. And so it is with Yah. He is the health. He is the health of the countenance of his nation, his people. Yah is the health of my countenance. He is my sovereign master's. He is the master. He is the sovereign one. Shalomo says uh, that in them we find life. In what? How or what was the paradigm of his speaking from? I will show you the constitution as I read unto us Shabbat of a healthy nation. It says this. And I'll tell you where this one is. I just don't like the fact that when I tell you what it is, you continue to read. You don't hear. We need to hear. 
When I was in the university, in school, uh, in the college, I would always hear. I never really had to study for a test. You know why? Because the instructor gave precise instruction. I could write with my right hand. I wrote with my left hand. So I, could t- I took notes. Everything he put on the board, everything she put there, I didn't have to study. I didn't have to read. Because they would tell you. And the test was based upon the principles of the things uh, that I was able to just listen. And I would sit there in that class uh, and I would pay attention. I didn't care how boring it was. Uh, I did not care about the inability of the, uh, of the professor. I would listen. I would listen. I would listen. And when time uh, came to take tests, or as we would say, tests, uh, came time to take the test or the tests, it was not difficult for me. And I made excellent grades because I had the ability to listen. We want to come in in our minds. That's why we read on. We can't even fulfill that what we're hearing. Listen to this. This is what Moshe says in Devarim. He says, now therefore Shemach, hear. Shorach says, before you speak, learn to hear. He said, learn. Before you even speak, you need to learn. Moshe says, now therefore, Shemach od Yisraya, he tells us to the Chuchim, or the statue, and the statues of Yah, the actions, or that which is prescribed to us, and the limitations of that. He says, and to the judgment, the Mishpatim, which I lomad, which I teach you, I train you, he says, for what? For to do them, to asa, to fashion yourself according to that. To fashion your mind according to the health of Yah. To fashion your ponim, your face according to the excellence of wisdom. And that you rejoice in that. There are people that work in jobs that their countenance is always pleasant. They go through hardship. They go through difficulties. But their countenance is always pleasant. Always. And we are such Fraudulent hypocrites. We are. And that is the thing that heals them, although they don't know you. But their countenance is beautiful. Their attitude is beautiful. I go in places, Ima, and then there are those that will speak nice to the folks before me. When they look at me, they don't say nothing. I'm not offended. I get that a lot. I get it a lot. They will say to the one before me, you want to give something to this? They won't say it to me. And then the person behind me, they say it. They won't even say, do you have your card? Then I'm serious. I'm not offended at that. I know they're childish and immature. It makes me no difference. I don't even know you. Probably never see you again. Listen to this. As I said, Shalom Moshe says, for they are life if we find them initially. Moshe says, for now we must have for Shemach, hear the statutes and the judgment which I teach you, Lord Mark, which I train you to do them. Why? That you may chaya, that you may live. And I read us the definitive of chaya. You may, must be restored to the health, the stability, the strength of the original one. The health of wisdom, the health of Torah, that you may remain alive, we may live prosperously. He says, and that you will go into the land which I give you and possess it, because Yah has promised this unto your avat. He has promised this unto Abraham, Yitzchok, and Yachob. That's what he has done. And any time our conversation negates the discipline or what is prescribed according to Torah, that we do not limit ourselves to go beyond that, then we're going to always be cast down. We're going to always, our counting is going to be cast down. For Yah's not the health of our poor need. We get up in the morning, we know we have life, then it causes health to shine in our eyes and light. Yeah. And so when you see one that may not have that same excellence of knowledge or that yithron, that profiting of knowledge and wisdom like you, it is the power of your countenance. Something is wrong with our countenance never express the beauty of the healthiness or the health of Torah or the wisdom of Torah. Something is wrong in us. 
Something is sick in our minds when our countenance uh, doesn't express that. When I pull in my face, something is wrong when we have this ingrained, indentured features in our face that they never express uh, the very excellence of the beauty of, of, of Yah. Something is wrong. There's something deeply wrong in your mind and your ruach, and you're not healthy. You can eat all the herbs you want. Uh, you can drink all what you call pure water. You can spend ten dollars a bottle for water. You're just a fat out fool. Huh? I'm not going to do it. Huh? If I eat fried chicken as long as I'm not eating fried catfish, I bless that in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach is all right. Instead of eating ten pieces of fried fish, I'll just eat two, all right? And I may later on, maybe the next day, eat the other piece, all right? How about that? At times we need to purge ourselves. Just do away with certain things we eat. Sometimes you need to just cleanse our bodies as we need to cleanse our minds through Torah. And sometimes we must eat that which is simple and plain and just eat it. And don't kid ourselves. You do that and see what happens. You see the transformation. And sometimes we put too much of this mess in our bodies and our minds don't function right. We got every kind of chemical there is in the processed foods, Israel. And it's just a fact. Everything. That's why it's wise for the bath of Tizayon to understand the beauty of herbs. Uh, and they grow them and we got, you got that everywhere. You got plenty. We have time to do it. We just don't take the time. You don't take the time. You got time to spend two hours on the damn computer. You got time to do something uh, that is of great value. Your doesn't attempt you to get 10, 12 hours of sleep. It attempts you to get around 6, 7, 8 hours. That's all you need. You don't see the cow napping during the day. You don't see the jackass napping during the day. Come on, Yisrael, yeah. You don't see that there are few beasts that sleep all the time. And they eat, and they don't live as long as others. The lion may sleep. 18, 20 hours a day, but he doesn't live as long as an elephant. That's a fact. An elephant is big and fat, but he doesn't live as long as him. That's just the truth. The teeth wear out. Elephant, 50 years old. I saw a clip one day where there was a community in Cambodia that had an elephant that had been with them 50 years, and they were still using the elephant. Do you understand what that is? 50 years? The old male lion, his teeth began to wear out. He gave us utensils and tools to last us a lifetime. But the world has destroyed us because we haven't been wise. Hallelujah. That's what it takes, Yisra. Yeah, we need the Haya. We need the, we need the wisdom of Torah that we may live and that we may stay strong. There are great riches in the, in the beauty of Yah's wisdom and understanding of, of what he commands us. Shirai gives us a beautiful analogy here. Listen to this. He says, that was from Debarim 4.1, okay? But look what it says in Shirai. It says here, it says, listen. Well, sometimes we always think about our situations and our circumstances. It causes us to be cast down. But Shirai says, better off is a poor man. Better is a man that is dull. Or oh, only poor that have not substance and things that one consider that is of great value. He says, blessed is a poor man who is well and strong. And I talked about constitution last week, didn't I? Who has a strong constitution. That's the word that Shirak used. We understand what the constitution is. But it's physiologi physiological, psychological, spiritual, uh, it, is the, it is the aggregate of the sum of principles and ideas uh, that cause one to pursue and follow. And when everything fails, they fall back to those principles. Uh, that's what the Torah is. It's our constitution. We go back to there to enable ourselves, to strengthen ourselves, uh, to revive ourselves, uh, and to make ourselves healthy. And so it's better. It's Yitron, it's more excellent. For a poor man to be poor, he has not much 
a poor man who is well and he is strong in the wisdom of Torah, strong in constitution, listen to this, that a rich man who is severely afflicted in his body, I'd rather be an old man like that, and able to walk and live, and his walk doesn't look like a 70-year-old, some old man. That's just a fact. Than to be a man that is 50, that whose body is severe. I've seen, the, there was a football player in the day, I know he knew, Earl Campbell. He ran into everything there was. Now he walks like a man that is 110 years old. He can't even walk. Arthritic. He's young, he's younger than me. And many of them, they play basketball, their knees, and they're, they're degenerate, and they're wealthy. I heard one by the name of Alonzo Moore. He played for the team in Charlotte when they got the team. He said, I give back every dollar to get my health back. He said, I give all of the millions for my body to be healthy. I'd rather give. He said, if I could take all of my millions and give it away to restore my health, he said, I would do it today. It would be no question. None whatsoever. Because with all of this money and all of the riches, it means nothing when your health abates you. That's why we must do what Torah commands us. And we don't realize how we affect ourselves or the effect of our actions and our activity. We kill ourselves. We do more damage to us. No one has. You know, I, you know my email. Sometimes I say, yeah, I do pray for my enemies. I say, but who am I? I don't know. I don't no one is trying to do anything against me. I don't have any enemies. You have to understand what it, the weak ones, they're not even enemies. David enemies, they were. They were aggressive and vicious. No one is doing I don't have any enemies. Who are my enemies? Israel. Those that say, I don't want to be with you, that doesn't make them my enemies. I just don't see it that way. I, I don't have any enemies. Now, if you're my enemy, that's your problem. But I say, yeah, I don't know who to name as my enemy. I just pray for them. I believe what Torah says. I pray for them, yeah. I pray for them, yeah. Your will be done. I don't know how to pray, but you said pray. So I say, yeah, your will be done. Hallelujah. I don't know my enemies. Well, you don't want to throw shade with him or her. No, I, that, I don't want to be bothered with them. Come on, Yisra, yeah. If a man betray you or woman, just like Yehuda Iscariot. He said, I will stay with you. I'm going to see. He kissed him as though he loved him. And he betrayed him, did he? There's nothing more vile than betrayal. Hallelujah. Better off is a poor man who is well and strong in constitution than a rich man who is severely afflicted in his body. Now listen to this. Look at what the health produce. When a man is healthy, when a woman is healthy, it produced a great sign. Look, listen to what Shirak says. Uh, he said, health and soundness are better than all gold. Not some gold, but all gold. All gold. Better than a mansion with a bathroom this big. What can you do in a bathroom this big but bathe and defecate? Tell me. What can you do in a bedroom this big? It would probably get a little too chilly unless you got, well, if you got one this big, you got money to make sure it's temperature controlling everything. But what? I mean, that doesn't fulfill anything. I looked, and I thought about the scripture. I looked on the Shabbat, saw the spider right there. I said, even, and I went to the Torah where it says, even in the, even in the castle, even in the house of the king. The I said, bless you, Yah. And you are king, too. But yet here, oh, I'm not going to kill the spider. Come down there, hold and catch little bugs. Catch them all. That's all right by me. Hallelujah. Well, he's poison. Well, what spider is not poison? Every spider is poison. That doesn't mean they can kill you. They always have the ability to disable their prey. He says health and soundness is better than all gold. And he talks about a robust body. A robust body than countless riches. Whose body is energized. There's strength. Uh, there's virility. And, and there's uh, strength in one's body. It's better than anything. How do we ascertain that? By hearing what Torah says. We must allow the Torah of Yah to enter into our hearts to heal us. To heal our appetite, to heal our desires, uh, to heal our greed. Uh, well, what do you mean? We must confront that. Yes. Yes. 
Someone must be willing to confront that in us. We don't want to deal with the reality of us. We want to deal with, with the suspects of others, uh, how we perceive. But what about me? I'm worse than him. That's why I want to know the history of any man for once. I don't care what a man has done. Hell, we have all have sin. So his sins are no greater than mine. I don't care if he committed it 50 times in my one time. It's still the same. He forgives it 50 times just like he forgives it one time. So I've never been keen on that. I've had those. I say, look, don't testify. That, that's something. That, when there's a testimony, when there's a profound testimony, it is of great value. And you will know it. Well, I've got a testimony. Oh, no, 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 no. Just, just sit down. Sit down. Just wait. It's not of any value. He says, health and soundness are better than, than all gold and a robust body better than countless riches. There is no wealth. There is no substance. Wealth better than a healthy or the body of health. Now he's dealing with physicality. There's nothing more greater than a healthy body. That it functions the way it does. It cleanses itself. It purges itself. Uh, that it's not the incubate of all kinds of diseases and all kinds of ills uh, and all kinds of fermented thoughts and concepts in the mind because the body's not being fed properly. There's nothing greater than that. Nothing. Nothing. He said, and there is no gladness. Do you hear that? There is no gladness above a joy heart. When one gets joy, I got joy, bell joy. Deep down in me, I got joy, 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 deep down in me. And when one has joy, and I'm talking about genuine joy, not this which is suspect and phony. Yeah. Can I? Then they will do just what Yahshua, when someone truly has joy. When someone truly has that great joy of Yah. And there's nothing greater than, than above the joy of the heart. That's where health, uh, when the heart rejoices, when it's glad in the abundance of the riches of Yah, that Yah will take time to speak to us as a nation and to individualize that to me, uh, that his words come to me, that it cause joy. That's not the result among his nation. We get upset, we get angry. Who are you to tell me? Uh, you don't know. I know as much as you. So what? So what? You know more than I know. So what? So what? You learn from babies. You learn from children. I do. I like the children. I like to hear them. They got more, more sense than we adults. And that's a fact. They're more appreciative. They say things that are great rewarding. Although they don't know what they are saying. And that's a fact. It tells us this now. I, I don't want this to be the case for us. Shirag says, death, muth, mavit, to die prematurely, is better than a miserable life. And eternal rest is better to die than to have chronic sickness. It's better. Now, we don't have to have that kind of result in our lives. If we just begin to hear what Yah speaks. We don't have to have that. And that's just a fact. And you, sh you will see that resonate out of our pony. Hallelujah. You know the old Emma, she came down and I watched it one day. I said, boy, it's too cold out there. Old woman trying to catch some fish. So I said to her, I said, you fry that fish for my boy. Fillet that up. I'm not going to ask you again. I tried to pry it out of his son, but he won't give me much. So I said, did you fry that fish? He said, I'm saving that for soup. I said, old woman, no soup calls you. Skin that fish for my boy. Fry him up some. Matter of fact, I'm, that make me, may make me come to his house. Some fried fish. Talk to me. I said, I said old woman, don't say that thing. I said, we get some. I got him. Don't worry about that. We get some, all right? Fry it up. Hallelujah. But I watched the old woman. She was there on the banks. On the banks of Jordan. Nothing biting. 
not catching nothing. Tranquility, shalom, just sit there. Huh? Yet we as a nation, we sit with our minds so idle, we don't do anything productive. We make excuse for everything, that's what we do. We make provision for our own unhealthy ways. And we try to do things to eradicate a prolonged, sustainable ill that we have entreated ourselves and think it's going to change overnight. It's not going to happen that way. You can forget that. It's just a fact. It's not going to happen that way. Period. Hallelujah. And that's just it. That's it. That's it, Israel. We need this wisdom. We need the understanding of Yas Torah. We need this healing. Aruka. We need this restoration. That's why Yakahan says, listen to this. Hallelujah. That was Shirak 30. Read the whole chapter, Shirak. But listen to what it says in, in Yakahan. He writes unto Geisha and the beloved of the house of Yisraya. He says, I, I love that he says, Baruch, I wish above all things, my passion is uh, above all things that you may prosper and be in health a rukha you may be restored there may be a great sense of soundness in your being uh he says even as your nephesh pro prosper see we I, we I know what we've been taught about our nephesh we think that that is just some kind of invisible thing within what is invisible within us the nephesh is really the life of the uh, the, the animation of the being it's life it is the ruach yas ruach in his spirit it is the, his breath it is the breath that causes us to live. So we prosper as we grow in the knowledge of Torah, as we understand the wisdom and the correction, then we prosper. We are healthy. We look, we look like a shining light. Our ponim is so full of, of the beauty, of the, of the light, of the witness of Yeshua HaMashiach. Everything, our skin and all, Yisrael. The beauty of our skin. The cleanliness of it. That's the way it should be. A smile. Special among each other. It's a beauty to it. We smile for the world. Make them feel nice. It's amazing that we're the nation. We won't lie on the world, but we we'll lie on each other. We won't speak evil of the world. We speak evil of each other. It's just a fact. Hallelujah. So we must, as we began to grow in the knowledge of Yah, we will begin to, we will begin to, our health will begin to uh, be the very example of our wisdom and our knowledge of Torah. That's what it will be. And we will walk upright and straight before Almighty Yah. We must begin by hearing what Torah says. We must hear what the Torah says. And we begin to understand what the Torah says. Shalomo tells us what it will produce. This. He says, pleasant, listen, pleasant. Uh, he uses the word, uh, he says, it's a great delightfulness. There's a beauty. He says, pleasant words are as a honeycomb. That's what Torah speaks unto us. Pleasant words. It is sweet. It is as a honeycomb. He says, sweet to the nephesh, sweet to life, and health to the bones. It is health to the bones. It is health to the bones. Well, she didn't speak pleasant words. Let me ask you a question. You think that because a mother just ties her daughter, those are not pleasant words to her daughter. The avat just ties his son, those words are not pleasant. Sure, they are pleasant. Sure they are. I watched a little child today. She went up and she got five of those meatballs. And, and I said, little girl, you, come on. You, I know you can't eat that. So her sister comes to Porter and says, Mama says she's going to fire you up for that. Well, of course, then I began to talk then. I said, that's what the food is there for, for to eat it. Raphael said, Ray, I, I said, listen, that's all right. If she eats five, that's all right. Let her eat five. They there, so what? You all get out and 
run like she does with them little skinny legs. I see it fire to hit like a bullet. I know it's right. Then you could eat five. And so she says, Papa, I said, little girl, I know you can, but let, let's, let's reduce that, all right? But they're there for her to eat. No one says anything to you when you eat five. I shall, man. So we don't think that those are pleasant words. We don't think that things that, that aggressively uh, identify us uh, and dismantle our own passion, we don't think that that's pleasant. Everything that Yah speaks unto us, it is a pleasant word. Everything, uh, whether he rebukes us, corrects us, whether he chastises us, it is beautiful and it is pleasant. And it should be held to us. We should just... Uh, it's almost like one repudiating one and showing them their weaknesses. And then the young kid gets up playing football so I can know I can do it. I'm gone. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. I wasn't the best athlete, but I'll tell you what, I played like the best. I couldn't play ball like old Charlie Scott in school, but I wanted to play him. I want to play the best ball player. He may win. That's all right with me. Make me no difference. I play to win. And even when I lost, I still won. I didn't lose as no sore lose as they would say I lost. Let's do it again. Close in a minute. I remember this old fella. His name was Michael Mogib. He had more gab than gift. He had more mouth than a locomotive train. You could hear him a mile away. So he was telling me, I would dust you, boy. I would go up and down you sideways, that way and around you. I said, you can't beat me, boy. And I knew he was a ball player. He taught more game of ball and made people fearful that he beat them. That way, I said, you got me now. We're going to play some ball. He's about my height, maybe just a tad shorter. About the same height. Physically built, too. I said, let's go to the court. I'm going to spank you, boy. Well, of course, I knew when I spanked him, his attitude would be different. And I took him to the court, and I spanked him every way you could spank him. It was this old fellow when I used to go to the white. His name was Sid. He was, he was an engineer at Duke Energy. He was about 6'1". I'm 225 pounds, strong as a bull, fit as they come. Him and his brother's brother was an engineer, and he was an engineer. I'll beat you, Rob. Man, I'll I, I dog you in the day. I say, boy, you can't beat me. And one day he strolls into the gym, and I had, I had been pumping iron. I had ran, I believe, a couple miles on the track field. I, I had had a hellacious workout. I say, you ready to play ball? Oh, yeah. I say, let's ball now. Verse came, I beat him. We were going to 15 back then, 15 to about five, because I hit six, seven shots in a row. He wasn't fast enough, and he certainly wasn't strong enough. So after I beat him seven games, I said to him, I said, now, don't say nothing about it. Just finish. You won't have to worry about me saying anything about it. And I did not. So his brother walks in and says, what, what, uh, what's up? What's up, baby boy? You, you playing him? He said, uh, you all playing? He said, yeah. He said, I know you dusted him off. I said, leave him. I said, no. Ben Hartsfield had a son. Oh, he was missed everything in Chicago. Basketball player, physically attractive, built and strong. I said, boy, you can't. His daddy, oh, he, he'll beat you, Brother Roberts. He, you, you can't handle him. I said, I kill him. He's not quick enough. He's not strong. Oh, he was like that. Like that. Yeah, sure he was. I said, boy, I'm, I'm going to take you right down to your university where you go to college. And I'm going to whip the fire out of you. And I took him down to the college and I beat him every way it was to beat him. I ran the soles off of his shoes. So we go back to his house. His daddy says, who won? I said, look, boy. Don't tell your daddy who won. I will never say anything. I said, just tell him we played ball. We had a wonderful time. Daddy said, who won? I said, we had a great time. He's very hard to feel. I didn't want to 
preacher know I be this sound like that. And it's great time. He had one. I said, Ivan, who won? He said, he's so weak. Daddy, dad, we had a great time. Well, two weeks later, his daddy come in. He said, my boy told me what you did to him. Oh, why did he tell you that? I would have never said one thing. Never. We have to have that passion. I may not be the best. I may not can do it like her, but I can do it like her. I can do it like her. I can do it like him. You understand? And we can. We can do all things. Yoshua Hamashiach, the giver strength. One last verse, and I'm going to close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it's one thing, if nothing else I leave with us tonight, we must do this, that we may have great help. We don't realize. It's one khatur that Akshimri has always quoted. Be not given too much of their foolishness. And why die ye before the time of create death? And this is what Shalomo says. I close with this. Hallelujah. He tells us to forsake, abandon, go away from their foolishness, the foolish laughter, clowning, the folly. Go away from it. Daughters, there should never be a ring of craft foolishness and laughter that is so it resonates such shrill of sound. Never. We must forsake that achim. We should not be clowning and jiving. Forsake foolishness. And he says, and haya, and be healthy, and you live. He says, and go in the way of understanding. Forsake it. And that will cause us to live, cause us to have great health, cause us to be stronger, and cause us to be very vibrant. We must begin to examine ourselves. We must be healthy people. And I'm going to teach on this every Keith V. Uh, Imat that Yah grants me to teach. He old Yisraya, Yah is a God. Before you speak, before you talk, learn, listen. That's a wise man. Before you say anything, you need to learn. And when you speak, it will be of great volume. Why? Because the wisdom of your countenance, your ponim will speak of the great crown of your knowledge of Torah. Yabarak, Yoshua's name. Let us stand to our feet. Let's turn to Yahushalayim. In all things we do, Barak, you are above for the simplicity of your teaching. Restore us, Yah. We need your health and your sure. Bless your nation that we may be strong. We told you for all things, those that Join us for the live stream. Bless every home. Bless every ear to hear. And strengthen, I pray, in the blessed name of assurance, the Yoshua's mighty name. As Arasachin would pray, take those homes safely. And we ask all things in the blessed name of assurance in Yoshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Yabrak Yisrael.